Hello and welcome guys to another edition on Lua. In this um, episode, we are going to walk through heuristic dissectors and potentially while walking through heuristic dissectors, look at trailer dissectors. So far in our previous episodes, we have covered various forms of dissection and uh, usually header based dissection. In this uh, episode, we'll be discussing trailer based dissections and I have pulled up the code for a trailer based dissector here a very simple dissector that should illustrate how to use this so um, heuristics before we I guess dive into it let's just spend a minute on what heuristic dissection is normally when we dissect packets we know we are looking for a certain port number or certain ether type and so on to plug in our dissector. In case that doesn't happen, and for example, in this case, you may be scanning for certain bytes in the packet, and then if the bytes happen to be some value, then you can say that, hey, this could be my dissector. And the bytes may be floating around, perhaps. So you might hunt for bytes and say, okay i found those bytes here somewhere and therefore it is uh, the dissector that i was looking for or the protocol i was looking for so heuristic dissectors are not specifically as well defined as the standard protocol dissectors and you have to try a bunch of things to see what works and then pick that to be the heuristic so with that i guess in this example our heuristic dissector is called a heur, <laughs> for lack of a better term. It's um, a heuristic, and it's a trailer. So I have given that as a, as a name and description. Now, the thing that you will see here is that when we register this dissector, we will register this in the Ethernet trailer. And so what here's the method to register this is the name I chose and you register heuristic and then give the name of the um, protocol where you are going to be uh, running the heuristic on in my case I chose the Ethernet trailer to be the heuristic and you have to define a function that checks and says whether that part of the protocol where you are running the heuristic is that containing my protocol so existence checker is another function that you will write here. In my case, I've written this existence checker and provide the standard buffer, the, the P info, and the tree data structures to this. Now, watch closely what happens in this. Uh, what I do is that I look for this magic number. And if the magic number, which is, you know, towards the end of the packet, if it occurs at a certain position in this trailer, and it's a two byte long uh, magic number. If this potential magic number is found, which is beef in my case, then I call in the heuristic protocol dissector and pass on all the buffer, P info, and tree data structures to it, and I'm done. If not, then I say false, and the dissection goes on and looks for another dissector till it finds a working dissector. If it finds a working dissector, then I guess dissection is done. So now, once the existence checker is done and it has um, cascaded into the my dissector here, what happens is that this dissector, pretty much like our previous episodes, is written like a standard dissector. You come in and you can update the pinfo protocol field. So your pro last protocol dissected would, or I guess in this case I'm saying last, but uh, the last protocol usually updates that table in Wireshark which shows what the protocol it is. And you may choose to not do this because you may not want to show your trailer protocol as the last protocol dissected. Um, so you may com comment this out. But in my case, um, I choose to add that and then the subtree uh, adds the trailer. And in the trailer, I've defined three fields, the foo bar and the magic number, which obviously had, we had found at certain location. Now notice that length plays an important role because this is a trailer. And in trailers, usually, the unlike the headers, trailers are usually written backwards, which means that you walk from the known end 
which is the end of the packet, and then you walk backwards. So, so the fields here are all um, backwards, and so you go length minus x, and then you go forward and look for a, a certain uh, field there. So rest all is pretty similar. One thing I wanted to highlight, people have asked me this, um, one thing I wanted to highlight is that the way this uh, command is written is very interesting. It gives you the, the protocol definition, which you can see that it's a proto field and here's the name, etc., and its format. But then you define where the buffer is going to be found because when you click on this field in the tree, Wireshark can actually highlight the buffer below where it shows all the packet. It can, it's a very nice feature, it highlights what the buffer location or the byte location is. So you need to provide this. And then finally, the value. The value which is provided here in a combination of this first field and the third field gives you the right um, definition in the tree format. And this second field gives you the highlighting part which happens in the, uh, the byte section. So that is basically the, uh, the code. Now we can uh, dive into the, uh, the demo. And so I have uh, pulled up uh, Wireshark here, and you can see that the pinfo that I had added here, you know, this this pinfo calls protocol, and because of that statement, it shows up here in the protocol field. If you didn't do that, it'll show you the last protocol that you had uh, figured out in that packet. In my case, I chose to overwrite that, and therefore my protocol shows us H-E-U-R. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that if I did this correctly, you will see that there is this nice highlighting, right? So if you click this, it shows you where that is. And that's really following those uh, patterns of the, when you add to the tree, you add three things. You add the protocol definition, you, you add the location where the buffer is, and the value. And as long as you do that, you get this nice um, feature of Wireshark where you get all this highlighting happening. So um, really what I want to point out was that you saw that the dissector was written to walk backwards and it found, found beef um, towards the end. And then it goes and looks for foo, which was the field after that, and then bar. Uh, I'm sorry, before that, and the field bar, which was before that. So essentially the dissection is the same as before, the key thing here to note is that we have to write an existence function and register this as a heuristic. And then if you register this as a heuristic dissector, Wireshark has to come in, apply the heuristic, and if the heuristic succeeds, then it calls the dissector. Unlike the other case where the dissector is basically registered in the tree form, and as long as in the tree you are in a column entry and you're registered, to handle a certain uh, condition like, you know, the port number being X or the ether type being X. So in this case, there is no registration. It's just saying that I'm going to provide you my existence function. And as long as the existence function succeeds, I'm going to be um, run. The, the dissector is going to be run. So um, that's it, guys, for this episode. Uh, and uh, this basically covered and showed you two concepts. Uh, how to do heuristic dissectors with the existence rather than the table um, function defined. And the second thing was how do we handle trailer dissectors and uh, using eth.trailer. And so that's it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, please do check out the other um, episodes in this series. It's um, a lot of different topics that I have covered in uh, the Wireshark Lua space. And um, please do let me know if there is any topics that you'd like me to dig into and I will um, make another video for anything that you guys would want. Um, and um, if you like the video, please do um, give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe um, if you want to receive more videos from me and uh, hit the bell icon for notifications. Um, so that's it and catch you guys later. Bye-bye for now.